Okay, let's wrap up the syllabus. So I'm just going to kind of go down and show you maybe two or three more things. So as you scroll down the syllabus, make sure you're reading everything. There's a section for SLCC policies, requirements of you as a student, as me as a, of a teacher, etc. Um, this used to be a requirement that we had to include directly on our syllabus. So I've left it there because I, I like it. I like that it's easy for you to get to. But the same information can be found on what they are calling the, the institutional syllabus. So someone at the college has set up a page on Canvas that if you click this link right below the SLCC policies headline, it will take you to that page and it will have the most up-to-date information. Now I update my syllabus before, or my syllabi, because I do a lot of them, um, before every semester. And so the information should be accurate up to the date that I did it. But if something changes mid-semester, they'll change that on the institutional syllabus. If we keep going down, I've included some important dates that you should be aware of. Um, most importantly, I would say the last date to add and drop and withdraw a class from a class. Sometimes you sign up for an online class and you realize that it's just not for you. I will not be offended if you want to switch into an on-campus section. I'll even help you if, you if you're like, hey, I'm not going to do well in this. I want to take it on campus. Just email me and I'll help find you a seat in an on-campus class. But you do need to know that if you want to drop a class, it's different from withdrawing from a class. If you drop a class, it's as if it, it is ex as if it never happened. So... If you drop a class, it's not going to be on your transcript. No one's going to know. It's as if you signed up for 10 classes, you decided to keep four, and you drop six. No one has to know. But if you withdraw from the class, you're going to have a W on your transcript. And that can be a red flag if you're trying to get into grad school or somebody is looking at your transcript for a job and they see like 3,000 Ws. They're going to they're gonna wonder why you kept withdrawing from classes. And so you should really consider whether or not you want to withdraw, and if you think you're going to withdraw, be proactive and drop the class before it's time to withdraw. So the last day to drop a class, which means you get 100% of your tuition back, will be January 28th, which is actually a very generous date. Uh, I've taught at other colleges in New Jersey, and you didn't have more than like three days before they started keeping your tuition and making it a withdrawal instead of a drop. If you get halfway through the semester and you just think, I'm not going to finish and I don't want to fail, you can still withdraw from the class, but you won't get a refund, and you could do that. Well, you'll get a partial refund up through the semester, but the absolute last date to withdraw would be March 12th, and you will not get a refund on your tuition. But having a withdrawal is better than having a failing grade on your transcript. Um, some other key things that you need to know, there's no class on January 21st or February 18th. They are Martin Luther King Jr. Day and President's Day. And then we also have off for spring break, March 18th to the 23rd. Um, I'm a firm believer that students are not required to complete coursework when the college is closed. And so every week when I send out your weekly announcement that tells you what you should be working on, I will tell you this week is Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday on Monday. So take the holiday, it's your day. I've budgeted Tuesday through Saturday for your coursework, and that's when I recommend doing it. I won't assign you anything over spring break, etc. Okay, the visual art and design department also has a few policies about prerequisites, auditing, and testing out. Make sure you read that. I've included a list of all of the certificates and degrees that you can get in the art department if you're interested. Click on them, it will take you to the catalog, and you can find out more information. What's important about this section is I want you to know that if you are an art student, um, no matter what you're studying, there's a full-time faculty that's responsible for your area, and you can ask them any questions that you may have. So you can go to an advisor for help with registering for classes. If you need to know specific information, like really detailed information about your multimedia program that you're registered for, you would contact Neil Ryland. If you're interested in web design, you'll contact Andrew Wilson. Most students who take this class are registered in graphic design or graphic communications or the new graphic design and communications. We've, we've merged the two. Graphic communications is the production side of graphic design. Art 1280 is a graphic communications class. We are learning technical software to be used in a creative way. Um, so what we've done is we've merged graphic design and graphic communications, and we're calling it graphic design and communications so that everybody who wants to study kind of graphic design and production, we can all work together. If you're studying any of that, you would talk to Carrie Gonzalez. And as a side note, since I'm someone who teaches the Art 1280 class, I teach graphic communications. So if you have any questions about graphic communications, I can also help you with that. 
Okay, last but not least, at the bottom of the syllabus, I'm going to have to refresh the page, is a copy of the semester calendar. And I know I've said this 45 times. If you have not printed a copy of the calendar, you need to print it. It is your lifeline for this course. You can physically cross things off. If you have a printout, you will never not know what you should be working on each day of the semester. And then last but not least, at the very bottom of the syllabus, it outlines everything that has a due date. So if you're concerned with not submitting something that's due, if you're thinking, I don't want to miss something that's due, you can use the bottom of the syllabus to make sure that you submit everything. And so um, I've listed that activities one, two, three, and four are due by Wednesday, I think, of the first week of the semester. And then lesson one is due by Saturday. But I've actually put the whole date in as Saturday so that anybody who adds a class late won't get notifications that they have late work. And so you can see that you have to get all that work submitted by January 12th. And then you can see that lesson two is going to be due by January 16th. Lesson three is by the 19th, etc. I would caution you though, this only lists things that are due. So if you need to complete the lesson three lecture before you complete the lesson three skills practice and you try to just use this list, you're going to miss out on tons of really good stuff that's going to help you learn the material. Every semester I get an email from a student that says, I'm working on lesson eight and it's asking us to do X, Y, and Z and we didn't even learn that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Everything's covered in, in the Lesson 8 lecture. That's a really long lecture. I think it's like 70 minutes long. And they link me. They send me the, the link to the demo videos that are included on the Lesson 8 skills practice. And then I realized the entire semester up to that point, they weren't watching any of the lectures. They were just watching the demos and getting frustrated when they didn't know the, the answers to the knowledge test questions. So don't be that student. Make sure that you recognize that these are only things with due dates and that you should be navigating our class by always going to the home tab and then clicking modules to get started on on whatever you have to work on that week